Hey, what's up, guys? I forgot to add this into my calculator video. So before um before I upload that, I'm gonna add this in right here. So this is the challenge for the arrays, and uh, this is how you do it. So you want to create a string variable to hold your hello string. Remember what we're trying to do is we're trying to print out each letter of hello on its each, on its own line. Then we're gonna create this variable called char array called hello characters I just called it hello chars equals hello dot two char array I briefly showed you how to do this in the last video but uh, this is how you do it you set this equal to so this is going to be equal to capital H comma E comma L comma L comma O in other words an array of characters then you want to create a for loop and you want to do less than hello cars dot length and it's going to go through each one and print out hello chars at I so if we run this real fast this is what we see hello now it's easily expandable I could say hello there with an exclamation mark run it again and it's gonna do hello there so uh, now on to the main video see you guys there hey what's up guys this is Fatal Cubes here and um, the first thing I'm gonna say in this video is uh, the reason I haven't been posting very recently is because I've been sick and uh, I didn't want to post videos with my throat hurt and the second thing is this is a new mic um, this is a headset mic so I hope it sounds alright but in this tutorial we will be making a calculator so go ahead and create your class called calculator and make this main function you guys should know how to do it and the first line we're gonna write is this and my cap lock, caps lock is on so Okay, so you're going to declare a new scanner. So you're going to do capital S scanner, and then I'm naming it lowercase s scanner. You guys can name it whatever you want. Equals new scanner, and then in the parentheses, you're going to write system.in. That basically is saying that we're going to be accepting input from the console. Now, it has a red underline because we need to import it, so go ahead and hit control shift and O. That'll do this import java.util.scanner. That's basically going to allow us to use the scanner class from Java. Now we're going to make four string variables for all the different operators that the user could be using. So we're going to allow adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. So let's do this. We're going to use the asterisk for multiplying and for dividing divide we're going to be using the slash key because uh, that's another way of using division once you have those four keys down uh, we need four more variables actually we're going to need an operator this is what the user inputs you'll see how we do that in a second how we accept input and we're going to need the first number that they input the second number that they input and then whatever the answer is and we're all these are going to be doubles because we're going to accept any type of um any type of decimal places now you will notice that there's a bunch of yellow underlines because we haven't used any of these variables yet so let's go ahead and start using them first thing we're going to print out is welcome to the calculator version one you can really print out whatever you want that's what i wanted to print out and Please enter your first number. Okay, now at this point, we're going to do this line of code here. Just follow along. First num equals scanner dot next double. All right, so what is this doing? So it's going to say your first number is going to be equal to whatever the scanner dot next double is. So scanner dot next double is going to return whatever the user types in. So if I type in 7.3, first num is going to be equal to 7.3 okay now this is works for doubles but it also works for anything else you could do scanner dot next int scanner dot next float scanner dot next string uh, next line for a string and uh, so let's go ahead and ask for an operator so we gotta ask for an operator and we're gonna we're gonna give them what they can input so it's those operators and again we're gonna for this line though we're not finding a number we're doing operator equals scanner dot next 
Okay, this is just going to return, um, finds and returns the next complete token from the scanner. So, like, without spaces, what the next thing they typed in is. And because operator should only be one thing, it's going to return, hopefully, whatever the user inputs is valid. So, let's go ahead and, uh, ask for a second number. And, again, second number equals scanner.next double. Now we need a series of if, if statements down here because we're going to have to do different things based on the operator. If the operator is a plus sign, we're going to have to do first num plus second num. If it's minus, first num minus second num. And you'll see that in a moment. And to check if the operator is equal to something, you have to do this dot equals. And we're going to do plus. Because remember this plus is really a variable up here. So it's going to be equal to this plus sign. So we're checking if the operator is a plus sign. Then we're going to do answer equals first num plus second num. This should be self-explanatory. Else if. Um, operator dot equals minus. Then answer equals first num minus second num. Another else if here, operator dot equals multiply. Then we're gonna do an answer equals first num times second num. That's how you do multiplication in code. You use the asterisk key. And oh, if you guys want, you know, you don't have to use the asterisk key for multiply. You can use the um, you can use the x if you want. Else if we're going to check for two more things. So if it equals divide, then we want to divide. So first num divide by second num. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add in the last else, uh, another else statement that's basically going to say you inputted something valid. So invalid input aborting. And um, we're going to scanner.close because we're done with the scanner, we're going to close it. You have to call that. And return. So what does return do? Return is going to knock us out of this function, which is basically going to exit the program. Um, so we're saying, well, if it's a plus sign, add. Uh, if it's not a plus sign, then check if it's a minus sign. If it's neither of those two, check if it's multiply, then divide. And if it's none of those, then we're, gonna, we're saying we can't handle it. We're going to close out of the program. So now the last thing we got to do is go ahead and print out outside of these if statements we're going to print out your answer is plus the answer whatever the answer comes out to be now the key thing to learn here is if if they didn't put in a valid operator and it reaches this return this code will never be reached okay so this won't be reached if it's invalid and you'll see that when we test it so let's go ahead and run this. Please enter your first number. Now to enter things in the console, you just click here, and when you type, it should be green. Now if you enter in letters, it's obviously going to crash, so let's just enter in 5. The operator, we're going to do times, and the second number is going to be 5, and we're going to see if it comes out. Your answer is 25.0. The reason it's .0 is because it's a double you could make it you could turn it into an integer and just print out 25 but this is fine for now and that's it the program ends so we could run it again if we wanted to now what happens if we enter in an invalid operator like 4 equals 6 it's gonna say invalid aborting there's no answer print out and that's it the program ends so this works for anything uh, 9 divided by 3 your answer is three. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. It's the first program where user input is used, and we use a scanner. So to use the scanner, you have to create it up top. Scanner, scanner, equals new scanner. You can name it whatever you want. You can name it input, and you have to pass in system dot in, in the parentheses. We then went through and asked for a first number, operator, second number, and depending on what the operator was, did some sort of operation. And after printing out the answer, we close the scanner. Now, the challenge for this video 
is to create it so that we don't have to keep rerunning the program every time we want to do an operation. So let's say we did 3 plus 3 equals 9, or 3 plus 3, and then it prints out 6. It should ask you, do you want to do another one? And if I type in yes, it's going to go back to the top, ask for another first number. And if you say no, it's going to exit out of the program. So just a uh, hint, you're going to want to use a while loop and basically say while the user is still going, while it still wants to um, do more operations, loop through again. You know, if he doesn't want to go again, if it reaches the bottom and the user says no, then exit out and end the program. So that's it for this tutorial. See you in the next one.